Hello everyone, Sula here. If you could just have one telescope, what would it be? Well, you might say, Sula, that depends on what your goals are. If you're an aspiring astrophotographer, you probably want a small refractor. If you're a beginner just starting out, you'd probably do well with a Dobsonian. Or maybe you're already an amateur astronomer and you want to do a little both visual observing and astrophotography, well, you might want a schmidt cassegrain But let's say you just could only have one, no matter what. Well, I think most people would agree it'd probably be a Dobsonian telescope. I own one. Mine's a 10-inch Dobsonian made by Orion. I believe they're all made in the same factory in Shenzhen, China, and they just slap a different label on them but you can get a Skywatcher or an Orion. And the basic model is the classic six inch Dobsonian. And that's an excellent telescope for a beginner. Mine's a 10 inch Orion Dobsonian telescope. And I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of your Dobsonian telescope. So let's get started. get a lot of aperture for a fraction of the price of either a Schmidt Cassegrain or a refractor or a reflector when you buy a Dobsonian. But they can be a bit unwieldy because they come in this big tube. So to make it so you can get it around to your observation site or in your car, I recommend that you get one of these hand trucks and strap it securely to your hand truck to move it around. Mine's a Milwaukee hand truck with a 500 pound load capacity. I actually bought this one because it has a long plate that will slide under the daisy wheel that your Dobsonian sits on. And that works well for me. It's very secure, it's not gonna fall off, and I can easily wheel it out to my observation site. Because when you own a telescope, if you own multiple ones, the one that's the most portable is the one you're going to use the most. While I would highly recommend the hand truck to move around your Dobsonian, I find it to be essential. You don't need it, but I recommend that you get one of these covers. This one's sold by Orion and it's made specifically for my 10 inch Dobsonian telescope to cover it up when it's not in use to keep dust off of it. But it's not essential. Just as long as you keep the cap on to keep the dust off, that's the main thing. Orion used to sell a go-to Dobsonian telescope, but for some reason it's no longer available in their catalog, which is a shame because that would be great because the one drawback of a Dobsonian is that you have to find everything yourself and you have to constantly nudge it to keep the object in the field of view because it's not tracking the night sky. But they do make two kinds of Dobsonians, Orion does anyway. They make just your standard classic Dobsonian telescope. You find everything, you push it to keep the object in the field of view. But they make a second kind, and that's what I got, the Orion X-T10 in telescope. And the Intelescope has encoders on it. And you point it towards the zenith, and then you turn this hand controller on, and then it says enter, ready, and then you have to find two stars. And once you find two stars, then it has a database, and you tell the object that you want to look at and it tells you the coordinates and then you push the telescope 
to those coordinates and when it gets to zero, zero, that's when you should be pointed at the object. That's called the Orion in Telescope. And it works very well and I recommend it if you can afford it, but it does make the price go up quite a bit. If you're on a budget, your basic six inch Dobsonian telescope is the best value for your dollars because you can get a big aperture for a small price, comparatively speaking, compared to a refractor or a standard reflector or a Schmidt Cassegrain or other catadioptric telescopes. 10 inches is a very big aperture, uh, especially if you're a beginner and it collects a lot of light. The aperture is the size of the primary mirror or primary lens on a refractor. And the bigger the primary mirror or lens, the more light you can gather and the more you can see, the deeper space objects you can see, and the more detail you can see on planets, the moon, and even deep space objects if you're in a dark enough place. But even in a suburban sky, the bigger your aperture, the more you're going to see. So if you're just starting out, that's why most people recommend a Dobsonian telescope. You can't go wrong with it. And they'll last you a lifetime if you take care of it. Now they do require some maintenance. You have to collimate the mirror that's right here. The light is gathered by the mirror at the base and it goes up to a secondary mirror that reflects the light to your eyeball where your eyepiece goes. And those have to be precisely lined up so that you get the most out of your telescope. And that's called collimating your Dobsonian. And I'll show you how. In order to collimate your Dobsonian telescope, make it parallel to the ground because you don't want anything dropping down the tube. What you're going to do is remove any eyepiece from the eyepiece holder and Orion gives you a collimation cap. It's a little black cap with a hole in the center and reflective coating on the other side. And you put that in the eyepiece holder and you're going to look through that and you're going to make two adjustments. Maybe you don't need any and you shouldn't have to do this often because it comes factory aligned. You're going to look through that hole at the secondary mirror. That's the mirror at the front of the telescope that reflects the image to your eyeball and you want that to be centered. So don't pay attention to the primary mirror for the time being. You just need a two millimeter hex wrench which Orion gives you and a Phillips head screwdriver. You look through the hole, and if it looks dark, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, <laughs> and I forgot to do it, you take off your dust cap. Take off your dust cap and look through your collimation tube, and don't pay attention to the primary mirror. For now, you just want to make sure that your secondary mirror is centered. If it is, you don't need to do anything. If it isn't, then you're going to have to make some adjustments using the two millimeter hex wrench by making very small turns here. If the mirror is too far forward, use the Phillips head screwdriver to make just small turns until it either goes forward. I think counterclockwise makes it go forward and clockwise makes it go back until you keep looking through the collimation cap and the secondary mirror is completely centered. After you do that, then you need to center, keep it parallel because you don't want anything dropping down there like a screwdriver or anything. Once you have your secondary mirror dead center, next you no longer need the Phillips head screwdriver. Next you need to adjust perhaps the primary mirror which is at the back of the telescope. Again, you look through your collimation cap and what you want now is you want 
your secondary mirror precisely in the bullseye of the little black dot in the center of your primary mirror, which is at the end of your Dobsonian telescope. If it's not, then you take your hex wrench and you go to the back of the telescope. In the back of the telescope, there are adjustment screws for your primary mirror. The tall ones are the locks and the short ones are the adjustments. You unloosen the tall ones and that won't change the position of the mirror. That's just so if you have to move the primary mirror, it'll be loose so you can turn the shorter ones. You can't look through both at the same time because it's too long. So you look through your collimation cap and if it's not dead center, you make very small adjustments. Go back to the collimation cap until the black dot, which is in the center of your primary mirror, is dead center of the circle made by the secondary mirror. And once it's dead center, then you're all collimated and you're ready for observing. So that's how you collimate. And hopefully you don't have to do it very often. You shouldn't because it comes factory collimated. Another suggestion I would make for getting the most out of your Dobsonian telescope, unless you're one of the lucky people who got one of the go-to Dobsonians that Orion used to sell, or one of the other companies may still sell them, maybe Skywatcher, uh, is that you're going to have to find everything yourself and it's harder than you think. Oh, you don't need this collimation cap anymore. So let's take that out and put it in a safe place because you may need it later. It's good to check your collimation from time to time. So let's put an eyepiece in. And start with your lowest magnification, which is your highest millimeter eyepiece. In my case, I'm starting off with 24 millimeter Teleview Panoptic which gives a good field of view and it's not too much magnification. The magnification is the focal length of your telescope divided by the focal length of your eyepiece. I think the focal length of this 10 inch Dobsonian is 1200 millimeters. Yeah, 1200 millimeters f 4.7 and the diameter of the primary lens is 254 millimeters. This is my 10 inch Dobsonian. So it's 1200 divided by 24 is the magnification. Now don't use that to look for things. You want to find a finder scope to do that. I have an Apertura uh, 9 by 50 and even that can be hard at times. So to make it even easier, I recommend and I bought this dual saddle for holding two finders. One of them is my standard finder scope and the other one is a red dot finder. The red dot finder, and unfortunately you have to go around to the other side to use it, it doesn't magnify like the finder scope does. It just makes a red dot and then you look through it and you're actually looking at the sky and so that gives you an idea if you're in the correct position and that helps a lot and so once you are in the correct position with your red dot finder then you go back to the other side and you look through the magnified finder scope and then that will help you locate your objects. Now remember, they're going to drift out of the field of view, so you're going to have to nudge it periodically. Before you do any of that, you have to line up your finder scope with your telescope. So during the day, what you do is, I can point to one of those rocks on that ridge, take your dust cap off your finder scope, and once it's in there, then you want to look in your telescope and if it's lined up, 
they are both in the crosshairs of the eyepiece of your telescope and your finder scope. And you keep making fine adjustments until they are both dead center of the crosshairs. It helps if you have uh, an eyepiece that has crosshairs on it. I bought this extremely cheap and not very good eyepiece from Celestron. It's 12.5 millimeters, but it has red crosshairs on it, and that helps me to line up my finder scope with my telescope. And once you've done that, once it gets dark, then you can use your red dot finder to make sure you're in the right area of the sky, and then your finder scope, and then once you have it dead center, if you've done it right, should be dead center of your eyepiece, and then you're ready to look at some exciting things in the night sky. So, you don't have to, but just a recommendation. You do have to collimate if it gets out of alignment, but I think having a red dot finder and a finder scope helps a lot to find the objects. And I think that the dust cover helps keep your telescope clean. If you keep it clean and collimated and dust free, this telescope will last you forever for a lifetime. So it's a great investment and a cheap way to get into a fascinating and wonderful hobby, exploring the universe. Just a few more tips. If you're like me and you live in a northern town, dress as warmly as possible. When you think you have on enough clothes, put on more clothes. Get hand warmers, toe warmers, and body warmers. And one of the best things to look at when you're just starting out is the moon. And right now is a great time to look at the moon. It's twilight, or I don't know, maybe the sun already set. And there's a crescent moon up there. And I'm looking at it right now. And it is incredible the detail you can see on the crescent moon with a 10 inch telescope. So give that a try before the sun even sets while you're waiting for it to cool down. Couple more tips. I highly recommend the excellent book, Turn Left at Orion. It tells you how to star hop, which is what you're gonna have to do with the Dobsonian. Because if you don't have a go-to telescope, you have to get to know the night sky and you have to know where the constellations are to get in the constellation. And then this book gives you some excellent targets. And this is a great book. I highly recommend it. And by star hop, what I mean is, when you're trying to find an object, and this turn left at Orion book gives you some objects to look for, you point your telescope to something that's easy to find, like a very bright star. And then, once you have that, then you look for some other stars that are nearby, and then to get to the object that you want to look at, a nebulae or a galaxy, so this book not only gives you some targets, but it also tells you how to find them. Turn left at Orion. I strongly recommend it. I love it. And I also recommend that you get a star atlas that will also help you. It doesn't give you targets, it's just an atlas, but you have to have one of these because you, this one will show you where the stars are and what you're looking at and how to find other things and this is Sky and Telescope's Pocket Sky Atlas. I got the Jumbo Edition, but they make a smaller one, and either one will do. But get one of those, and you don't need it, but something I really like is this little $6 waterproof map made by Orion called Deep Map 600. Now, I don't know why it'd be waterproof. Uh, you wouldn't be outside when it's raining, but it's tear-proof. Well, what you do is, it's no rip plastic. You look at this when it's raining or cloudy inside, because I like it, because I, sometimes I just like to see the whole sky, and that's what this map does. It shows you the whole sky, and I like that. And I like to just study the sky. Inside if it's cloudy and raining, outside if it's not. But always looking up, 
in the dark sky. Just waiting for some clouds to pass before I look at some deep sky objects. First I was looking at the moon at dusk and that's when you should look at it. Otherwise it will blind you because it's so bright if you wait till it's dark. But as I was mentioning, the Opsonian telescopes are primarily for visual viewing. But if you want to try your hand at astrophotography, you can. You have to find some attachments to make it focus with your camera, with your DSLR or mirrorless camera. First thing you have to have is the T-ring that goes to your specific camera, like this one that goes to my Sony. And then on the T-ring, you have to have a nose called a T-adapter, like this, that's one and a quarter inch to go into your focuser. You probably won't be able to achieve focus that way because it's too close to your camera sensor. Oh my God, it's snowing. This is horrible. The clouds are over there, but it's snowing. This is a two-time Barlow Shorty sold by Orion, and it comes with the one and a quarter inch adapter on the end of it that screws off. I mean, you screw it off of the, anyway. So I tried to focus my camera with a T-ring attached to an extension tube. There are two ways to do it that way. One is called prime focus, and the other is called projection focus. With projection focus, you take off your T-ring that goes on your camera, and you put a lens inside this extension tube. And that's called projection focus, but it's not the preferable way. Um, and you can only fit certain lenses in there, like this 15 millimeter aperture that's skinny enough Oops, you put it that way with the lens facing up inside the tube. And then you put your T-ring back on. I've never tried it this way. But then once you have the lens, uh, I'm sorry, eyepiece in there in the tube, you screw back on your T-ring that goes on your camera. And then you put the one and a quarter inch where your eyepiece normally goes right here. Right now I have a three times Barlow in there because that is another way that you can try to achieve focus. You can attach your camera to a Barlow lens. Lens. And that way you can use this tube to attach to your T-ring and then to your camera. However, this two-time Barlow still doesn't let me achieve focus on this Dobsonian because the focal length is so long, but I am able to achieve focus by using this Barlow, which is a three-time Barlow made by Teleview. And instead of putting this eyepiece in it, I put my camera right there and I got some shots of the moon. And then you can also take pictures of some other things, but it's going to quickly move out of the field of view. So you can only take a few seconds worth of pictures and then you'd have to stack them. But it is possible to use your Dobsonian telescope for astrophotography. And that's how either prime focus using the T-ring and a one and a quarter inch T adapter and your camera or a Barlow lens or an extension tube with an eyepiece in it for projection focus or a three-time Barlow with your camera on the end of that. So that's how, those are the ways I know how to use your Dobsonian for astrophotography. One more tip, and this applies to Dobsonians and all reflector telescopes. Because the primary mirror is at the bottom of the telescope, it takes quite a while for this type of telescope to cool down. Wherever you store it, it's bound to be warmer in that area than the ambient air outside. 
sometimes significantly warmer because you probably keep your house 70 degrees and in the nighttime it's cooler and so you want your telescope to be the same temperature as the ambient air. So with the Dobsonian that takes at least 30 minutes if not more. So you take your Dobsonian telescope out. You can leave the dust cap on but leave it out there outside for 30 minutes minimum and then when it's dark outside your telescope should be cooled down because if it's not cooled down it's not going to focus proper, properly and that's also why you collimate to help you get the best focus and the best view of the night sky. So those are my tips for getting the most out of your Dobsonian reflector telescope. If you're looking to get your first one the classic 6 inch Dobsonian is a great telescope for a beginner. But if you can afford more, then get the biggest one you can and, and can still move because they can get really unwieldy when you get up to 16 inches or higher. I think they make them up to 30 inches, but you're talking about a really pricey telescope and really heavy. You'd have to have a, I don't know, a trailer and a wheelbarrow and all kinds of stuff. But this is 10 inch and I can handle it and move it around, like I said, with the hand truck, but 12 inch still pretty portable and get the biggest you can and can afford and you'll get the most out of you in the night sky. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you found this useful. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.